guys. Today's video, I want to discuss just the very basics of oil painting. I figured since this channel, I'm mostly discussing things involving oil painting, whether it's a time lapse, a tutorial, different advice and tips that I have. It all surrounds the subject of oil painting. So I thought we're definitely going to need just one video, basically just covering all of the essential materials and supplies that you're going to need for oil painting. So what is oil paint? Basically it's a powdered pigment, which is the color mixed with an oil. Oftentimes this is linseed oil. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how Gamblin makes their paints, but you can also use safflower or poppy oil. There's actually an amazing video that comes to mind when I think of this question, and I feel like it addresses oil paints perfectly and why they are priced um, the way that they are, and it's called Why Oil Painting is So Expensive. <laughs> I'll make sure to link that below though if you guys are interested in watching. So oil paints are a slower drying paint medium, and since they're oil based, they need a prime surface to bind to, otherwise over time they'll end up eating through the surface that you are painting on. Regardless of what that is, if you're using canvas, wood, um, palette paper, it needs to have a prime surface when you're using oil paint. So you can either do this yourself and I'll make a video showing how I prime my surfaces or you can buy panels that are already pre-primed for you. But this is something that can be easily achieved with using some gesso. I usually do about three layers and I sand in between each layer so that I get a really thick smooth primed surface to work on and because oil paints are water soluble you'll need to use some sort of solvent or oil to thin out your paint and clean your brushes now that you have a basic little understanding about the medium let's touch on what you're actually going to need to start oil painting so the obvious one is oil paints now when you're just starting off i'd recommend that you get an introductory set i put together a list of colors commonly included in these sets these colors will be enough to paint just about anything. I would definitely recommend having titanium white, ivory black or Mars black, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. Along with that, you're also gonna need something to paint on. So we have a lot of different options here. Canvases are the most common, but you can also use wood panels, um, gesso boards, which is what I prefer to use. You can paint on linen, painting paper, and the list really does go on, but as long as the surface you're working on is primed, then you're gonna be good to go. You're also gonna need some paint brushes, so when you're just starting off, you really don't need to go and buy all of the paint brushes. When I started painting, I found brushes that came in a pack offering different shapes, and that's really all you need. I still use those brushes today. But if you're wanting to invest in some brushes, I would say just try to get a variety of different things. Make sure to have some larger ones in there so that you can cover a lot of surface in a shorter period of time. Have some detail brushes, um, some round ones, flat ones, angle brushes, just a little bit of variety. That's the spice of life, you know? So start with that. You don't need to get very expensive brushes. Um, honestly, the ones that aren't that expensive work just as well for me sometimes. So there's that. And then we're also going to need a palette or somewhere that we can mix our paints and keep our paints as we're working. So for my palettes, I literally use a piece of glass out of a picture frame from the local Dollar General. <laughs> we don't have to get all expensive and fancy here. And since I prefer to work with oils, I just find that glass palettes have given me the best results as far as the pigment not seeping into a wood palette or anything like that. So. I do have a video showing how I create my glass palettes, and I'll link that right here if you're interested in seeing that. And we're also going to need a palette knife. This palette knife is my all-time favorite, and I've been using it for years. And something else that's going to be really nice to have on hand is solvent. Now, I know there are some artists out there who paint without solvent, and that is an option, but I'm going to include it here because I think if you are going to experiment with oil painting, this, this is something that, even though it's not essential, it's really nice to have. So solvent can also be known as paint thinner, turpentine, terpenoids, terps, you get it. It's basically what you use in place of water. Since oil and water do not mix, oil paints are not water soluble and you cannot clean the paint out of your brushes with just water alone. Another thing I'd recommend having is a glass scraper. It's not necessary, but it is helpful. 
I find it to be the easiest way to clean off my paint palette, especially if my paints have dried. However, if your paints are still wet, you can actually clean your palette just by simply using a paper towel or your paint rag. Now, oil painting itself does get a bad rep for being toxic and hazardous to work with, but this just isn't the case. Again, oil paints are made with pigment and oil. It's the solvents and the mediums that you use that can put out toxic fumes, so I highly recommend getting an odorless paint thinner and keeping the room well ventilated when you're working. Gamsol is a great choice for studio safety and I use all of their products. You can also use spike oil or some EcoSolve. I think these are just a little bit cleaner options. Another really nice thing to know is that whenever your solvent is starting to get muddy or murky from all the paint that's coming off of your paintbrush, you can actually reuse it by just setting the jar of solvent aside for a few days and all of the oil and the sediment will actually fall to the bottom of the jar and then you can pour out the reuse clean paint thinner into a new jar. Which brings us to needing rags or paper towels. Now, if you are using rags, make sure that you allow the dirty rags to dry thoroughly before disposing them and you can do this by setting the rags outside for a few days. The oily rags that are not yet dry, you're going to want to soak them in water and then place them in an airtight plastic bag, then dispose of it in an outdoor trash can or dumpster. Because improper disposal of a stain soaked rag can cause spontaneous combustion fires, which we all don't want. So. <laughs> Keep your dirty rags um, and paper towels in a sealed metal trash can so that you can cut down on the paint fumes. And that's going to be it for today's video. I really hope that this has been helpful to you guys. And if oil painting is something new to you, please remember to just have fun with it. Don't be too hard on yourself. Make sure that you have patience and you're not comparing yourself to other artists. And just embrace your unique journey and practice often. It's <laughs> the best advice that I can give. There's so many different fun things that you can do with this medium. And so many different opinions out there on how you can do it. So what's going to make you stand out from the rest is experimenting and finding out what works for you. You will mess up and you will make mistakes, but each painting is going to teach you something. Every artist paints so differently and that's really the beauty in it. In my oil painting basics playlist, I'm going to be going over different mediums, varnishing techniques, how to clean your brushes, priming panels, and all of the fun useful things that you will encounter as an oil painter. So make sure to subscribe to see all those videos and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in next week's video. Bye!